A computer game that sends out subliminal messages has been condemned as manipulative and sinister. Uh. This is the game that's causing alarm among parents. Really? Really is it? What they're trying to do is to affect the child's mind beneath the level of consciousness, and that seems to me an immoral thing to do. The computer game showing children at school being shot at has been on sale in Britain. Oh no, what sick horror is this? Violent computer games are nothing new, but this one's more shocking than most. Not really, it's obviously a deliberately jokey and tasteless shareware game, the sort of thing that, I don't know, might be flogged out the back of a computer magazine for 50p. But don't ask me, ask someone who'll be horrified by these reports. I'm horrified by these reports. It's amazing you can stand still while his knee's jerking like that. Throughout this period, games couldn't do anything right. Although, to be fair, when journalists do interview games players themselves, they don't do the pastime any favours. That's the whole point of games, is to be realistic, but not be so, like, realistic at the same time. So you can kill people, but not think about it in the morning. Horrified, uncomprehending adults claim that this obsessional solitary vice is producing a generation of teenage mutants suffering from a form of cultural autism. Children get so hooked that beating their last high score is all that matters. And my cousin, my little cousin, bro, every, every time I go in his house, he's playing the game. He, must, he thinks he's, um, the man on, um, streets of range. Every minute he's beating me up, bro, and he's saying, yeah, and then all this, um, another inarticulate gamer. Why can't they ask someone, I don't know, a bit more middle class? As well as playing about two hours a day, Matthew has also managed to pass grade three piano, and he claims to enjoy a bit of Dickens. He seems the perfect, well-rounded ambassador for the games he plays. Oh, he's only about two, but who knows? Maybe he'll say something cute. A beat em up is um, a game when, um, where you beat people up. Um, you um, punch them or kick them and um, jump on them. Um, break their necks, um, smash them over the head with bottles. Beat em up, simulated combat game in which the player leathers the stuffing out of people. Now, beat em ups may look like a simple exercise in just knocking the shit out of someone, but actually they're at least 4% more complicated than that. Physically harming your fellow man has been a staple feature of video games since before they could adequately portray the brutal reality of unarmed combat. To an onlooker, an over-the-top, bloodthirsty beat-em-up such as Mortal Kombat here might seem unnecessarily violent. That's because it is. Johnny Cage wins. Anyway, after being picked on for years, it was only a matter of time before the games industry started living down to expectations and released a slew of titles that were gleefully offensive. Grand Theft Auto is a game in which contestants can rise through the underworld by performing jobs for gangster godfathers. Points are awarded for murder, arson and drug running. Yes, the granddaddy of all controversial games is a British creation directly inspired by the pioneering Spectrum game Turbo Esprit. The release of the first GTA game at the height of media hand-wringing over joyriding ensured plenty of coverage and even caught the attention of the Home Office. Under proposals being considered by the Home Office, a health warning would be flashed up on the screen at the start, reminding players not to drive like this on the roads. The freedom to do what thou wilt in GTA's virtual environment sent the popularity of a fledgling genre into overdrive. Sandbox or open world game, a game in which the player is left free to explore a virtual world in non-linear fashion. Sandbox games are massive modern play sets, basically. Huge environments in which you can do what you like. They started back in the day with the epic space exploration and trading simulation Elite. Elite gave the impression of containing an entire functioning universe, but actually, that was an illusion. Computers weren't that powerful back then. Instead, the thousands of planets and solar systems the player could explore were generated by a clever series of algorithms. Modern computers really are powerful enough to contain complete worlds, as in the nihilistic, almost overpoweringly detailed Grand Theft Auto series. GTA's Liberty City is a living city filled with working roads and buildings and bridges and rivers. It has its own transport system and police force. It's got radio and TV stations. It plays host to thousands of independent citizens driving thousands of vehicles or strutting the pavements or getting run over or innocently driving their taxis into the gun sights of a maniac who shoots them rather unfairly in the head then sits waiting in case there's a passenger who panics and get out. Yeah, <laughs> hang on, wait a minute. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> and then he picks her off as well. <laughs> as you can see, it's a morally blank world in which I'm free to do what I like and it turns out that what I like to do is be antisocial. Why'd you call me? You want my... 
Now, I don't think I'm likely to confuse this with the actual world because it doesn't stink of foul human flesh. But as far as the rest of the media is concerned, what infuses games with their special satanic menace is the notion that they could be conditioning the player to perform these actions for real. You could argue that by that logic, someone who spent the morning playing cheerful cartoon leap em up Super Mario World would spend the afternoon jumping on mushrooms and banging their head against bricks in search of magic coins. But then cheerful cartoon games like the Mario titles rarely get much coverage, especially when there's so much more disturbing stuff out there just waiting to upset news reporters and make horrifying reports like this. Manhunt 2 is a new video game where the player gets physically involved in the violence. So your emotions are recreated in the game? This is correct. You can slaughter them in an increasingly brutal manner. As you can see, he's curled up in the fetal position and we're still whacking away. I mean, that's pretty violent. That's correct. Thanks to technological progress, the nasty stuff now looks nastier than ever. It's a long way from beta manitum to modern sex games, such as the seriously creepy Japanese molestation title Rayplay, for instance. It's a similar case with violence. That's evolved too. Oof, so much for tennis. But now, if you're a bad loser and feel like shooting your opponent, you can always take to rifle practice. They're of course, shooting at dots wouldn't offend or disturb anyone, except maybe a particularly sensitive dot. Whereas modern video game gunplay is routinely portrayed with a frequency and bloodthirsty relish you simply wouldn't get away with in a film or TV show. Something like Call of Duty World at War here is a brilliantly constructed game, but it's also psychotically ferocious and astronomically tasteless. But even though my brain tells me this is horrible, I can't deny that I enjoy it. I just wouldn't really want someone to walk in and catch me enjoying it, which makes it just like loose women, basically. Even to a psychopath like me, some modern releases are so deliberately unpleasant I find them too depressing to play through. Take the grisly atmospheric Condemned 2, for instance, in which you play an alcoholic ex-cop who has to stagger around this horrifying environment, swigging from bottles and fighting tramps with your bare hands. If you're playing this for escapism, you're probably Scottish. But if I find it hard to stomach, millions of others don't. Here we see grisly action-packed footage from the game Fear 2, uploaded to YouTube by a fan who's provided his own unsettling commentary over the top. Today, I'm going to dedicate a video to my favourite weapon, and this is Sniper. You can see how the head rips off and the blood everywhere. This is amazing. Die, die, die! Can you smell the burning flesh? I can. Now, I'm not saying he's mental, but he should probably be forced to cleanse his palate afterwards by playing something like this uh, pleasant neighborhood simulator on the Wii. Hello. 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 Good morning. Hello. Ooh, see, isn't that lovely? Doesn't exist, mind. Anyway, not everyone likes violent games. This is the downright revolting Mad World on the Wii, and here's singer-songwriter and video games reviewer Rebecca Mays with a musical review of it. Here at last, a hardcore game on the Wii that's nasty, stylized violence that we call comedy, like itchy and scratchy, like Tom and Jerry. I just stabbed a guy through the eye with a rope sign, pulled out his heart with So I give you a head, but with the nunchuck, 
Rhythm action game, loose musical simulation in which the player must perform actions in time to music in order to succeed. Musical games were first popularised in the late 90s by the hallucinatory Parappa the Rapper for the PlayStation. There's been a huge explosion in rhythm action games recently thanks to the success of Guitar Hero and Rock Band with the Fab Four joining the ride with the release of the Beatles Rock Band spin-off. The release of the Beatles Rock Band game is a true watershed moment for video games because it's probably got the biggest crossover appeal of any game ever, apart from that one where you push Mylene Class in the canal, which unfortunately I've just made up. The idea is that you, yes you, seize control of the Beatles and strum, bash or warble your way through their entire musical career, from their stompy stompy origins in the Cavern Club through to their rooftop swan song. To take part, as well as the game itself, you'll need uh, one of the guitar controllers or the drum kit or a microphone or preferably all of the above. It's really designed to be played by four people at once and if you are playing on your own, for God's sake, don't let anyone walk in and catch you because uh, there's no way you can strum a plastic guitar and maintain your dignity. Anyway, the game mechanics will be familiar to anyone who's played Rock Band or Guitar Hero. You have to hit the notes at the right time as they flow down the centre of the screen there. I think that's basically what proper musicians see in their heads as they play. Do it right and it all sounds good, mess it up and it all starts to sound pretty bad. It's essentially formalised air guitar. It's actually a really compelling illusion because within seconds of picking this up you really do feel as though you're playing with a modicum of ability. I could have been in the Beatles, it's a piece of piss. Oh, yeah, look, I think those girls like me. Yeah. Mmm, bloody... <laughs> I'm a grown man, I'm 38. You can also sing if you plug in a microphone, although it's difficult to do all of them at once. <clears throat> we all live in a yellow, red, blue, green... Visually, it's all very striking, with stylized Thunderbird-like Fab Four avatars performing in a series of live venues to start with. Later they retreat to the studio, which is the point where they took lots of drugs, although they don't show them doing that. Instead, that period's represented by showing them starting off in Abbey Road before apparently coming up on something or other, at which point everything gets heavily, heavily trippy before slowly returning back to Earth. Although when you're actually playing, you're so focused on the unrelenting corridor of notes in the centre of the screen, they could replace all the stuff around the edges with footage of Simon Mayo defrosting a veggie burger and you'd be none the wiser. As a game, it's hardly challenging. If you do particularly badly, the song just stops. But the game isn't really the point. In fact, it isn't really a game at all. It's a fun experience. It's a different way of enjoying the music and a great illustration of just how broad games have become. It's as close as any of us are going to get to being in the Beatles. In fact, the only thing missing is the option to have a Japanese concept artist turn up two-thirds of the way through and sit in a corner ruining everything. Well, viewer, that's about all we've got time for in this video game wipe type thing. And now here's Fred Harris from an old episode of Micro Live summing up our entire show in a flipping sentence as well he might. Here's the conclusion. So, if you've never played a computer game, don't dismiss them. There are games for all mentalities. It's just that the good games are hidden behind a mass of crude shoot 'em ups. And if that got you in the mood for some cutting-edge technology, why not head over to the BBC Archive website where there's a selection of classic Tomorrow's World episodes available for your delectation. Next tonight, there's comedy with the incomparable Rab C. Nesbitt. <laughs>